What's up, my dudes? How you doing? This is another video on conduit bending. So really quick before I uh, get down to business and show you how to bend this and uh, lay it out, let me just run through this drawing really quick and explain what this is all about. So before you go and lay this conduit out, what you want to do is you want to figure out what type degree of bend you want to use for the saddle whether it be a 30, 45 degree, 22 and a half, whatever it is, you want to calculate the spacing, the offset spacing, and then when you're done with that, you want to calculate the shrink. You're going to need all that to lay it out. After you've done, determined what degree of bend and what the shrink is, then you can start laying it out. In order to do that, what you want to do is first measure from the edge of your pipe, from the end of the pipe, to the edge of the obstruction. After you're done with that, you want to add the shrink to the edge of that obstruction. That will give you your first mark. For this video, I'm calling it mark A. So after you measure the edge of the obstruction, not to the center of the obstruction, to the edge, you're going to add the shrink to that offset. Whatever the rise is, I'm pretty sure you know how to get the shrink to the offset. If you don't, you can go back to one of my videos and I'll explain that there. Either way, you want to calculate the shrink. When you're done doing that, you just add it to the edge of the obstruction measurement and that'll give you your first mark. After you're done with that, you want to go and measure out your spacing to your first offset so you'll mark that spacing and that'll be your second mark that'll be mark b now you want to work your way back to point a to c which is the width of your obstruction this is where your obstruction is going to sit right here so you want to measure that out and mark point c this is your second offset here now, after you're done with that, you simply do the same thing you did on points A and B and put the same measurement here for C and D. It's just the offset spacing. That's basically it. You've done laid it out. Now, the only thing I can tell you is that what's important is with this method of doing the four-point saddle, you have to be sure to start with bend A and do it in this sequence. A b c and d now there are other ways to bend this saddle the way that i usually do it because i like to have the uh, conduit in front of me so that i can line it up is i usually do point a i bend it and then i bend point c so that i can line it up then i work on the outside bends you know, you're bending four bends here, so it's a lot easier to dog it. This way, the way that I just said it, it's it, it makes it, you know, easier not to dog it. You know, because you can line so it up. So like I was saying up. really quick, anyhow, you want to have, and, when uh, you start bending points A and B, you, you want to make sure this. to have your back towards the, the side that you measured from. So if you measured from here to get, a measurement you want to make sure to keep your back to points a and b when you're bending it just that's an important point just wanted to make sure that i, I got that made that clear okay so you want to have you want when you're bending a make sure that b is behind you okay and then when you start to bend the second offset which is you know c and d when you start to bend c a and b should be in front of you Okay, just wanted to make so that clear. So we're going to measure our obstruction, okay? And this comes out to 8 inches by 5. Roughly 5. It's 1 3 quarters, we'll say for the video, say 5. Okay, so now that you measured it, what you want to do is take the next step, which is decide whether you want to do a 30 degree offset or a 45 degree offset. After you decide that, you want to go and calculate the shrink of your offset. For this case, our rise is 5. For the video, we're going to do 45 degree bends. 
So our shrink is going to be an inch and seven eighths, and our spacing is going to be seven and an eighth in between bends. Now that we know that information, we can go ahead and start laying out our pipe. And with that said, from the edge of our conduit to the edge of our obstruction, we're going to have 25 inches. And to get point A, which is the first mark, what you need to do is measure from the edge of the conduit to the edge of the obstruction and add your shrink. Our shrink is what? An inch and seven eighths. So on top of the 25 inches, we want to put, we want to add the inch and seven eighths, which brings it to 26 and seven eighths of an inch. We want to go and just mark a little dash here. I'm going to put the letter A just to remind you that this is our first bend. Now after we do that, we want to go and lay out our second bend. You want to do this so that you get used to knowing where, in which order your bends go. As you get further experience, you'll be able to just lay it out and you'll know which bend comes before what bend. So now let's do our second bend, which our spacing, I said, was 7 and an eighth for a 45 degree bend. So we're going to go and we're going to put seven and an eighth for our second bend, which is bend B. And now we want to lay out our other offset, which is going to be the third mark, which is the width of your obstruction, which is eight inches. So you want to go and from point A, you want to measure over eight inches. And we'll mark that here. And we'll mark this point C for our third bend. And lastly, we want to finish it off with the last bend, which is seven and one eighth. Again, it stays the same for our last bend, which is our second offset, which is bend D, point D. And we have it. You laid out your pipe. So you have your first bend, which is A, which is the shrink plus the measurement from the end of the conduit to the edge of the obstruction. You have your second bend, which is the spacing, which completes your first offset. And then you have your other offset on the other side. Now, a point that you need to know is that when you start bending point A and B, your bends, you need to be facing, the back needs to be facing the end from where you took your measurement from. So you're going to be facing that way and your back is going to be facing that way. And when you do C and D, now you're going to be facing the end of where you took your measurement from. Okay? That's an important note. You need to remember that. Now let's bend some pipe. Okay? Now we're ready to bend. Now, don't forget, point A and point B, you have to bend it with your back facing the point where you took your measurement from. I measured from this point to here. So my back has to be facing that way. Another way that you can remember is point B is, has to be at your back. And when you bend C, C has to, you have to be facing where you took your measurement from. So this is point A. My measurement was measured that way, so it has to be facing my back. Now you can either do this in the air or you can put it on the floor. Either or. Usually with 45 degree bends, I like to do them on the floor. Okay. 
want to come and you want to just a nice one swift motion, you want to try to, you know, with a lot of foot pressure. Okay. Put your level in, and you want to just keep going until you're at 45 degrees. Looks like that's about it. There we go. Now you want to come and grab your butt, and you want to. There's two ways to do this. You can either finish off the offset by sliding down to point B and you can fit, put it in on the arrow and finish it off. Right? Just make sure that you're good and straight and I can finish it, finish the offset. Or there's another method which I like to do. Put my level on it. And I'll just keep adding it. Need a little more. result of the four point saddle basically if you have any questions at all please just leave me a comment and I'll get back to you if you have any ideas on any other bends that you would like to do please send me a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can thank you and please subscribe and share tell the fellas ladies thank you very much